Hey guys, Chris here. Last week, I was the guest speaker at the CSUS Mechanical Engineering event with Industry Night. And in a minute, I'm gonna play the lessons learned and QA portion of that talk. As you will see, I don't do a ton of public speaking, but I think it turned out okay and the students seem to get a lot out of it, so I'm glad I did it. If you have any nuggets of information that you wish you knew at graduation, leave it down in the comments so someone else can benefit from it. And sorry about the video quality. Over the years, I've always had this list of things in the back of my head of things I wish I knew when I graduated. Uh, the first one is that relationships matter. The people here, the people that you meet, the people that you work with, everybody from the shipping guy to the purchasing guy to whoever are people that are gonna have other positions further on in your career that you're gonna wish you knew. Um, you know, just people that you, you wanna be able to ping, whether it's just, you know, hey, what material did we use on that project? Or, you know, you might know how to um, call out this certain thread or some pr process that you don't know. Um, so that kind of stuff matters. Definitely keep in touch with people as long as you can. Um, if you aren't happy at your job, it's on you to fix it. Um, not, everybody's not happy you know, every day of their job, but if it goes on for months and months and you're feeling really bad about your job, you either need to find a different thing to do at your job or you need to find a new job. And you know, a lot of people will just kind of just start bitching and moaning and you know kind of bring everybody down but it's it's on you to either you know find another thing that you can be doing at that job or find a better job you'll mess up so will everyone else don't blame yourself or anybody else just learn and move on you know it's the biggest one of the biggest things i've learned um, you know everybody messes up you just have to accept it and move on whether it's your fault or somebody else's uh, yeah communication is super important uh, emails, presentations, anything, especially emails, because you're always trying to, you know, either give information or get information. And when I see a big, long, rambling email with like two or three questions spliced in there, you just know they're never going to get answered. <laughs> Bullet points, keep it quick, concise, to the point, and you'll get your information. Um, everything comes down to free body diagrams, line drawings, and summing the moments. It's, it just really does. <laughs> there, there's a few other things that add to that list, but so many times I see you know this really big complicated mechanism or something and it's like oh no it's just spinning there and getting loaded here it's not that big a deal um, but people get really wrapped around the axle just keep it to the basics do what's important and not what's urgent um, you're gonna have people yelling at you from ten different angles this needs to get done this needs to get done getting emails and things um, really look at the look at everything from the point of view of the, the best interest of the company and your supervisor <laughs> Um, and do what is the most important thing. Um, yeah, you'll see what I mean when you start getting barraged. <laughs> um, resumes should be one page. Uh, when I was at Balanced Body, I was the director of engineering and um, was in charge of hiring a couple people. And I'd get resumes that were five pages long and were just essays and things. You get exhausted and you don't ever end up reading those long ones. <laughs> keep it short, to the point. Don't embellish too much. Just keep it to the point. They're really looking for somebody that can help them, and you just want to show what you can do, whether it's your senior project, something you've done at home, working on a car, or whatever it is. Just keep it simple. Um, I think having a website is huge. I've had a website, not since I graduated, but um, just a personal website showing projects that I've worked on. I've had, you know, I was into wood turning for a while, so I had a bunch of wood lathe stuff on there. I've had, I did a power tool drag racing thing a long time ago. I had that on there, uh, working on my car. Just anything extra that you can have, you know, to put your website on the top of your, your resume and so they can go to there for, for more information. Pictures and things like that just really help um, convey a lot more information than a couple bullet points on a resume. Never stop at your first idea. Um, when an issue comes up or a challenge comes up, everybody has an instinct of, oh, just do this. You know, we've either done it before or that's the obvious thing. Um, it's usually not the best thing. <laughs> Whether somebody else is coming up with that real quick idea or it's you, just really try to st take a step back and you know, at least take five or 10 minutes really just to come up with as many crazy ideas as you can. And you know, some of those ideas might combine into a good one. All right, questions. Any questions for me? <laughs> That big mistake that you uh, mentioned. Well, not mentioned, but everyone makes mistakes. I used to. Oh, would you mind sharing that? Oh, jeez, <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, you know, it can be anything from you know you're ordering some prototype parts and you're rushing to get it out really quick and you forget to 
you forget to call out a threaded hole or you forget, you know, you forget to call something out. It, it happens, um, you know, hopefully you can recover. Um, yeah, no, there's, I don't have anything. I don't have anything on top of my head, but you really just have to like, and, and I'm really bad at this. You know, if I do something wrong, I, I beat myself up really hard and it's, it's, you just have to let go and move on and just think of the best way to recover. That's all your boss wants to see. He doesn't want to see you beating yourself up. He just wants to see how can we get back on track. So, you know, it's just really getting off that, kicking yourself in the butt and <laughs> finding the right solution. So, yeah. At what age did you start your first internship? Um, I started a year before I graduated. So, I don't know, I was 22 or something. Yeah. Yeah, interning is huge. You know, just getting some kind of industry um, background on your resume is is big. Um, you know, I couldn't at the time, but even if you have to like do something and not get paid, just like just be in the room with the people doing the right, doing what you want to be doing, and you know, try to make it someplace where they're doing something that you're actually interested in. You know, I always wanted to be making things and inventing, you know, new mechanisms and new ways to be doing things. So, you know, I wouldn't have taken an internship at like a sheet metal fab shop. Like that's not what I want to do. Or, you know, somebody that's, you know, just doing like the same thing every time. I want to be, you know, iterating and making the new best thing. So um, just think of what, you know, what gets you excited and try to get something in that zone. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I interned, actually, no, sorry, before Schilling, I interned at the uh, California Energy Commission for a year and a half, uh, for a while there, and then Schilling. So, yeah, it's a good experience. Any more questions, maybe? I had a question. I think I saw your professional engineer. Uh -huh. Could you describe your path to getting B and how did that happen? Um, I, I basically got, I mean, it depends on where you work, right? Whether you need it or want it. Um, I mean, you, you can want it anywhere, but um, I didn't really need it um, until I started my own company. When you're working for yourself, you need to have your PE. Um, when you're working under somebody else, you're, I think it's the industrial exemption or something, you don't, you don't need it. Um, so yeah, I just didn't, didn't need it. You know, basically the, <laughs> the application process is almost as hard as the test. <laughs> there's, uh -huh. there's so many loops and you know, <laughs> yeah. check boxes to check. Um, but that's another place where you know keeping in contact with people that you've worked with in the past comes up because you know you need references and all that. Um, let's see, yeah. And then I studied for you know five or six. I actually had to take it twice. The first time um, was I was just insanely busy leading up to it, and then I had like a week to study, so I just took it anyway and didn't pass. Um, but then I took it again and um, you know studied for five or six months. I did an online course. Um, and and did well. It's it's even easier now because they narrowed it to there's no there's no breadth portion. It's all focused. So like I forget what they call it. It's machine design or whatever. But you know you don't have to do thermo. You don't have to do fluids and all that. So it's it's even more kind of focused, which is either a good or a bad thing depending on what you're <laughs> what you're used to <laughs> or what you're good at. But um, you know it's a tough test. But um, I've never really worked anywhere where it was like required or um, you got a big bonus or anything. Some places will... So it was based on you working for yourself and knowing you needed it there. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. That was the thought process. Yeah. So if someone worked for internship with your company for a year, at the end of that year, what would you consider something hugely successful that they would have accomplished? Honestly, I mean, it depends a little bit on the company, but it's really just something that helped the bottom line in some way. You know, whether it, you had some like niche product project, whether you know, improving the the efficiency of an assembly line, or it was you know, fix an issue with a a product. Um, you want to just be able to say, I did this, and it you know, it's going to save this company X every year, or um, you know, prevent this much waste, or um, yeah, it's, you just really want to you just want to have something that you accomplished and. Um, help the company out. That's all any company wants is they want, you know, somebody to help them move forward and, and get their stuff done. So uh, that's what you want to be able to show. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious, how did your interests and goals evolve uh, during your progression through college, if at all? <sighs> through college? Honestly, I started college um, undeclared, and I wasn't sure that I wanted to do 
engineering. I like kind of waffled between engineering. Before I started college, I was thinking in, um, graphic design or engineering. It's always been kind of artistic, so it was kind of a little push and pull there. Um, but decided on engineering. Um, and then I thought maybe MET, because that high level math kind of scared me. Um, but I just decided to push through it. Um, but I've basically always just wanted to be designing new things. Um, my dad was a mechanic, my grandpa was a mechanic, so I've always been around like tinkering and taking things apart and being like, why is it like this? It's gonna be so much better. And um, so that's just always been what I've wanted to do is make new stuff, <laughs> improve things. Yeah. Going back to school days, what's your advice on taking the FE exam? Why not in school or after you finish school? And how important is your job? In my experience, it hasn't been all that important as far as getting a job. And it's really going to matter on the company whether it's you know they have that as a requirement. Um, I would take it as soon as you can, as soon as you're, you know, you've taken the classes that are going to be on there. Um, the further out you are from taking those classes, the harder it is. Um, the studying for the PE was a bunch of, oh yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, but luckily, you know, it, it comes back pretty quick. Um, but yeah, the FE was was challenging as well. Um, but yeah, I'd take it as soon as you can. I, I took it, yeah, I was still a student when I took it. Um, so I'd recommend that. Because you're just you're gonna get you're only gonna get busier once you, <laughs> once you graduate. I know it doesn't seem possible, but you will. <laughs> okay. So. so thank you so much for your All right. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>